Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Why aren't you like Jesus? Well, did you read what Jesus said? He's like, I'm not coming to bring peace on the earth. Now, obviously, peace on earth, goodwill toward men in regards to salvation. But this, this utopian, you know, Rodney King, can we all just get along type society doesn't exist. He says, I'm bringing a sword. And what does the sword do? It's divisive. It divides. It lets you know who's right, who's wrong. It lets you know who you should listen to and who you shouldn't. It lets you know who you should have fellowship with and who you should not. It divides. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Oh, Jesus, that's a little dis divisive there. Yeah, well, he didn't come to bring peace. He came and he brought a sword. It's meant to divide. The Bible divides. So this fallacy of peace on earth, where we can just all get along, we need to make sure we just tolerate one another, don't criticize other churches. It's all about Jesus, man. And, you know, this lubby-dubby bubble of Christianity is not biblical. Now, look, I'm not saying that there is no such thing as peace on this earth for us as Christians. But here's the thing. God offers peace, but it's on his terms. See, we'll never have peace with other religions, but you know what? God does offer a peace for the Christians, for believers. But it's not the type of peace that the world has to offer. And true peace is obtained on God's terms. It's not based upon tolerance of other people's sins or false doctrines. Go to John chapter 14. Look what it says here in verse 27. It says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You see, the world does offer peace, doesn't it? But how do you get peace to the world? Oh, you know, getting a bunch of possessions, making more money, drinking, substance abuse, partying. They offer all these, all these avenues of sinful manners of fornication, adultery. Oh, you can get peace by smoking pot or by drinking on a daily basis or hanging out with these types of people. This is the peace. No, actually, that's the peace that the world giveth. And Jesus said, my peace I leave with you, not as the world giveth, because the world is offering a form of peace, but it's not the right type of peace. And in fact, when you give yourself over to those things, you come out understanding, well, you know what? This is not what I thought it was going to be. This is destroying my life. This is destroying my family. This is destroying my wife and my children and the future generations. There's no peace in this. But there is a peace that God is offering. Go, go with me if you would to Romans chapter number 5. Let me start off by saying that God wants the world to be reconciled to him through his son. So in order for us to have true peace, first of all, we've got to be reconciled. We have to have peace with God. And that is through salvation. The Bible tells us in Colossians 1.21, And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Look at Romans 5 verse number 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. You see, true peace comes when we get saved. We're no longer in enmity with God. That's true peace. Oh, but you know, the way they, you know, that person believes his religion is, how he's going to get to heaven, and the way you do, you know, I just accept both as long as you're at peace with that. No, you need to be at peace with the true God. And you know what? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And look, the, the worst enemy you could ever have is God. But you know what? God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Right? Because we want to reconcile them. Look at verse 14. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision of the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. We're human, but the Bible tells us to, as much as lies within us, to live peaceably with all men. We need to try to make sure that we try to get along with people as much as we possibly can. And the way we do that is by working on our own personality flaws. You know, if there's certain characteristics or attributes that may be offensive to people, or maybe you come off as aggressive or abrasive, maybe those are some things you should change in order to have peace with you. But if people can't have peace with you, no matter what happens, then guess what? You go find another friend, right? As much as lies within you. But the Bible also tells us that he, God wants us to have the peace of God ruling in our hearts. And that's really the type of peace that we should be pursuing. This
this side of eternity is the peace of God that rules in our hearts. Because if you have peace in your heart, you can deal with any circumstance. You can deal with any situation, any trial, any tribulation. Why? Because you have the peace of God in your heart. Look what the Bible says in Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you're called in one body, and be ye thankful. We correlate peace with the fixing of a circumstance. But what if you have that peace without fixing the circumstance? That's called the peace that passeth understanding. That's when we start to walk in the Spirit, the, the Spirit produces, you know, peace in our lives, and we can, we can be basically at peace with God in our circumstances. See, happiness comes from happenings, but joy is of the Lord. And joys should never be determined based upon the things that take place in your life. It should be based upon you reading the scriptures, walking in the spirit, having peace in your heart. Because of the fact that you're gonna go through times when the whole world's falling apart all around you. And that's not the time to quit. That's not the time to get out of church. That's not the time to stop reading your Bible. That's not the time to stop praying. What is it the time to do? To ask God to give you the peace that passeth all understanding. So what am I saying? I'm saying that, you know, a worldwide peace is not gonna take place. And in fact, it is going to take place to a certain extent with the New World Order, but that's like that Islamic thing where they just kind of force that peace upon you, right? You got to submit it to them. But there is a peace that a Christian can have while they're on this earth, and it's based upon you praying, it's based upon your relationship with the Lord and your relationship with the Word of God, that you're reading it, and you're allowing the peace of God to rule in your hearts, okay? The Bible tells us that that will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. You know, thinking about the Lord provides that peace, doesn't it? Because of the fact that your mind throughout the day just runs wild sometimes. Bills, I got this, and car, and all these things, and health. But you know what? If your mind is stayed on the Lord, if you're focused on, if you're looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, he can keep you in perfect peace. Look at verse 32. Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone, and yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. Look what it says. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Now that kind of seems like it wouldn't really go together. In me, you shall have peace, but in the world, you shall have tribulation. Those are polar opposites. Well, that goes to show you that the peace of God is not determined by what takes place in the world. Because he's saying you can have the peace of God, but just understand that in the world, ye shall have tribulation. So we can look at this verse like this and clearly see that the peace of God that God offers is not unified religion. It's not, hey, let's coexist. It's not, hey, let's just all get along. It's when we are actually in submission to God.